Back in 2014, Apple released their first plus-size phone, the iPhone 6S Plus. I've had mine for about 5 years before upgrading to the 12 Pro, which is the longest I've ever had a phone for. Now, there have been many phones ever since the iPhone 6S Plus getting better each year, but not any cheaper. And so, is the iPhone 6S Plus still good in 2022? Well, in today's video, I will be reviewing it and letting you know. Let's get into it. Just a quick refresher on the specs, this iPhone 6S Plus comes with 64GB of storage, the display is 5.5 inches diagonally, and carries the A9 chip. When it comes to the camera, it can film up to 4K in 30 frames per second, has optical stabilization for photo and video, and the front-facing camera can film 720 pixels. When I was using this phone again, it brought back so many memories of my university days, hanging out with my friends, traveling. I believe I traveled to Vietnam, Portugal, and New York. After I graduated, I just went on a traveling spree. But anyways, when it comes to the condition of this phone, I did not baby it at all. Honestly, I dropped it all the time, and every single time it dropped, I would think to myself, is this when it's gonna crack, break, smash all over the ground? Honestly, it never did. However, I did use a iPhone case, but it was just a $10 one from Amazon. And I do have a screen protector for the iPhone 6S Plus. All I have is a few scratches here and there and a scratch on the screen protector. But other than that, I would say it's nearly perfect condition. As for the size, I do remember the iPhone 6S Plus giving me a lot of cramps when I was using it every single day just because it doesn't fit in my hand as nicely as the iPhone 12 Pro. And when it comes to reaching the buttons, again, it's not as convenient or easy. I find the iPhone 12 Pro a perfect size for me and the 6S Plus would be just too big. However, it was nostalgic to use the home button again versus just swiping up and using Face ID. The iPhone 6S Plus display runs about 5.5 inches diagonally, which is perfectly fine for watching videos, playing games, and going on social media. However, when it comes to consuming all these types of content, it is better to have a bigger display so it's easier for your eyes to visualize and understand what's going on. But when it comes to texting, I find it a bit more tedious because the text and emojis are spaced closer together with the smaller screen size. However, it's not a deal breaker, just something to look out for. With the brightness in this, it's perfectly fine for indoors. However, when you're going outdoors with a bright sunny day, it's not enough to combat the sunlight. So you will struggle with looking at your screen at the highest brightness. And I just found it, it was not enough. My battery health is at 73% maximum capacity. I also have this message saying that I need to replace the battery and I agree. When I was using this phone for a week, I was really just using it as a casual phone, not really as a content creator. I was just texting my friends and family, calling, going on social media, watching some YouTube and playing some games. The battery on this was seriously depleted because I would have to charge it at least three to four times a day. I do believe updating the iPhone with the iOS 15 software did make a drastic impact on the battery health because as Apple brings in more features, the bulk or the main part of the iPhone 6S Plus can't always handle all these new updates. So it will make an impact on your phone if you are considering buying an older phone. Now, if you are getting an older phone, I do recommend you replacing the battery or buying a phone that the batteries are replaced. Apple offers this service and to change the iPhone 6S Plus battery, it would cost about 50 USD or 65 Canadian dollars. During the day with good daylight, you're able to get away with a lot more with photos and videos. I will be comparing it to 12 Pro with side-by-side -side photos and videos. When it comes to low light, that is where there's no really room for error. The technology in the 6S Plus was not advanced as 12 Pro, of course. However, with the 6S line, there's a lot of blurred lines. It's not as clear or crisp compared to the 12 Pro because with 12 Pro, it has LiDAR technology 
which really enhances low light photo and videos. As for stabilization, the 6S Plus line at the time was the latest one to have that stabilization feature. Compared to my iPhone 12 Pro, of course, it's not going to be the same, but I do find that with a few shakes, it is exaggerated in the iPhone 6S Plus. And so I don't think that it is very forgiving when it comes to stabilization and you have to be careful when you are filming b-rolls or vlogging or else you're going to have a lot of shaking going on in the video. I would say 64 gigabytes is not enough, especially when you are constantly updating your iPhone. As each update comes by, it just grabs on more and more storage and less storage for your photos, videos, apps, games. A lot of these take up a lot of space. And within the five years, after about three years, I found that my space shrunk significantly. And so I would have to delete or move files to my laptop and then delete some apps and really choose what apps I want to use because I was always running out of storage. That's why I recommend you getting a phone with more storage, maybe 128 gigabytes, because these updates do eat up away from your storage and not just your battery. Back in my university days, I did play a lot more mobile games, but take my review with a grain of salt because I'm just a casual mobile gamer. So the only games I really remember playing a lot was Tetris and Final Fantasy at the time. So when I was playing these games, I didn't really experience any issues at the time or any lags or glitches. However, over the years, as my battery started to deteriorate, I did notice some lags and glitches. During the week where I was using it, I got into Mobile Legends Adventure and I have to say my phone overheats quite a lot. It goes in this cycle where every 45 minutes or so it would get hotter and hotter and just extremely hot for a couple minutes and then it would cool down a little bit but again holding my phone for a long period of time I had to take breaks and switch hands. Also every now and then my phone would lag a bit and glitch where I had to exit out of the game and go back into it. So when it comes to playing games it may not be the best experience but it's doable. I find it perfect for people who are just casually using it to text their friends and families, go on social media, the internet, and taking few photos or videos throughout the day. But if you are pushing it where you are creating a lot of content or taking a lot of videos, playing games, just using it for more intensive purposes, it won't be good enough for you in 2022. I do think there are better options for you. And if you are willing to spend a couple extra hundred dollars to get the most for your money. But with that being said, a hundred dollars, it still operates really good. Given that you have a replaced battery, it will definitely be good enough in 2022. Given the fact that phones go for about a thousand dollars these days you can't really complain with a hundred dollars and with all that it can do anyways that was my review i hope it helped you out and you enjoyed it if you haven't already definitely slap that like button for me i would totally appreciate it however that is it for me and i'll see you in the next one peace